Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the 505 Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the 505 Podcast. Uh, we're back again without our co-host, Chase. Yeah, so here's the thing, Chase. You go out of town. You think you can leave us. You think it's a good idea to leave the pod, but the pod stops for nobody. The train just keeps on rolling. Yeah, now man. I'm here. <laughs> there we we've, go. We've traded Chase out. <laughs> yeah. we've traded. Watch out, Chase. <laughs> we, have a, we have a really special guest coming on the show today. I am an avid watcher of this person's TikTok. Me as well. The oh, daily, well, the go. daily talk, and the daily turb openings. Um, so <laughs> we've actually we're doing something now where every guest is going to have to do a one-handed crack on the show. And there's there's a few rules that go with this. Okay. Okay. You can't fucking put it on the table because that's support and gotcha. that doesn't count. So we'll be having NA score. <laughs> you have to pick it up off the thing, crack it with one hand, and then we'll give you a score. Oh, you're scoring my. I, I'm my scoring opening. your opening. Yeah, I'm scoring your opening. So you have a method, obviously. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. I have a good method. So I do now. Before you start, though, our guest name is Jack Cook. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to introduce yeah. our guest. He That's is um, super talented filmmaker. Yeah. He edits a bunch of awesome podcasts, and he makes some really cool daily vlogs on TikTok. That so I welcome, do. Jack. Thank you guys welcome, for having me. Welcome to the pod. Thank and start, you. Start us off strong with a one-handed opening. Okay, let's, uh, let's oh see God, how it goes. Here we go. I'll do it into the mic. And there it is. You know, not bad, not bad, but there's a dent in the side of that can. And we're going to have to deduct some points for that Uh-oh. dent. <laughs> we're gonna, Jack's going to get a 6.4. And But the, what's good about 6. this... 6.4? But hey, you can always That's go failing. up. But you can always go up from there. Okay. You know, we're, we're, we're going to do this again someday and you're going to do a way better opening. I will say this is my first time trying yeah, see, a that's one-handed the, yeah, open. Yeah, that's kind of... That's not fair. We set you up to fail. I think anytime you can get over a five first try, dude, yeah. I still can't do it. And I've tried a couple of times. I'm yeah. like, it's just... I'm we're, meant for we're giving out like 2.4s all the time. Really? Yeah. So the, f- I'll get, the five is solid. Okay. Yeah. 6.4. Six, 6.4, four. Six, four, I mean. 6.4. Six, four. Four yeah, you did well. I also have no fingernails. I feel like mm-hmm. that yeah see i set you up to feel i should have told you to not clip the nail <laughs> right <laughs> should have prefaced with this but i love it um i do want to start with talking about yerba mate and where did yes. that obsession come because you drink one every day i do so um, Braden drinks a white monster every day this is a lot healthier yeah i was gonna say uh yeah kind of right I guess maybe these are pretty healthy there is a lot of sugar in them but i think it's natural sugar i don't know if that makes a difference i just like the taste Okay. That's the same with me with the monster. The caffeine doesn't even really affect me anymore. It's just yeah. all for flavor. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's funny because taste. right before you came, Brandon's like, dude, I'm fucking buzzing off some caffeine right now from this monster. <laughs> it definitely you, still affects when you, you. When you rip a few a day, you know, yeah. sometimes... They oh, might. you're more than one a day? No, I, it depends on the day. I try not to <laughs> go more than two. Um, I, I've Two is like an impressive day, you yeah, know, but I yeah. don't like to do that because I feel my doctor said one a day is what I need to stick to. And I was like, I'll listen to you. You, you might know a thing Yours or two. Yours says organic though, so I think you're yeah. a little better. Mine says place. zero calories though. <laughs> right. You're yeah. probably fine. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So yeah, where did, like, you're not a coffee guy? You're a Never been a coffee guy. Just never liked the taste. I hate the taste too. Yeah. I love the taste. Coffee I love drinkers the smell, are so though. weird. I love the smell. They're weird but I people. Don't. Yeah, they are kind of mm-hmm. weird. Do you, do you guys also think coffee flavored ice cream is weird yeah i hate it mm. i don't really like coffee flavored anything I, it's bitter okay bitter. Yeah. Ah, it's fucking delicious mm. so the obsession started in like 2017 okay. kind of a long time oh. ago one of my friends uh just had him at this house had his house mm. and he introduced us and like my friend group to them and we would just drink them before we would go like do shoots and stuff and this is when none of us ever had caffeine and so they would actually like wire us out like we would go and do stuff and be like we're like off the turbs you know what i mean (laughs) off the turbs i love it and so i don't know it just be kind of came a thing within our friend group to like always have them around and it was just like this accessory was that was that in college high school oh in high school yeah okay wow or i guess then it would have to been like 2015 maybe if it was high school okay long time ago what year did you graduate high school 2016 okay nice okay yeah i graduated i graduated in one five you're how old 24 Okay. We're the same age. That's great. I'm just saying, yeah, that's awesome. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So speaking of that time period, were you shooting stuff back then using yes. a camera? Doing YouTube videos. 
Nice. I scrolled forever on YouTube. I went way down. Oh, did so you? You've been doing this for a minute. Yes. Wait, was that was that how originally you got into the content thing? You're like, I want to be a YouTuber, or what? Is, what did that look like? Kind of. I, my my senior year in high school, I found out like what YouTube was, and I didn't know YouTubing or YouTuber was a thing. And then I found like a random Casey Neistat video Love and that. just came across it. it. Was like the same. No one's gonna like this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can we can all bond over yeah, Casey. Yeah. That's so funny. And so I just like I was like, what is a vlog? Like I didn't understand any of it and then i was like like social media and youtube's like the the way that he was telling these stories yeah. i was like this is an actual career path and i was like this is so fun i'm just gonna try and do it myself and do it with my friends we started making a bunch of videos and that was like the beginning of like the youtube channel what was the first cam uh just a drone and a gopro oh wow yeah i brought bought a drone first and i actually made wild first yeah. camera purchase well i made a youtube video with just the drone i actually got the drone because my dad wanted me to film the boat and him fishing That's okay so and he was like i want to get a drone i feel like it'll look cool with like the boat and the water and stuff i was like all right great so i figured out how to use it and i started filming a bunch of stuff in my hometown and i was like this footage looks really awesome i'm just going to put it all together and make a youtube video made the first youtube video before i knew what like before i'd watched casey any of that stuff and uh, just loved like making the videos. Then I found Casey and I was like, this is like a whole, a whole thing. And so then that's like, kind of how I got into it. And were you, you just vlogging like your life or was there, you know what I mean? What, what were the concepts behind those first YouTube videos? That's what I, I was just literally filming. When I found him, I was like, film everything <laughs> <laughs> and do like 47 different, <laughs> different cuts. And then I was of like, dude, I, I love this dude. Yeah. I'm like opening shit. I'm like, this is fucking sick. The yeah, sound, yeah. yeah. The sounds and all that stuff. And yeah. I was like, Oh my God. I love this guy. And the detail shots that he would do. Mm -hmm. So fun. It's so nostalgic to like, think about that. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, a really fun time in YouTube specifically. hundred percent. But I was, I was just making like, like I would take a whole summer with my friends and we would make one video. Oh, and nice. we would just pick like a one song and I was like, I'm just going to take a whole bunch of footage throughout like two months and just make one video. And then I would do like vlogs that was like behind the scenes of making that video as if we were like making a movie or something. Mm. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. And that was kind of like how I started doing that thing. And then as I got older, I started doing a little bit more like vlog style content and we would upload like once a week. And it was always like during the summer with my friends, like I would had come back time, home. Had some time, had some free time. Yeah. Mm. Were your friends on board with you filming everything? 100%. See, that, oh, that, makes, that, makes, that makes, makes all the dude. difference, dude. Oh, when you, when everybody's like on the same page, like, yo, every like, yeah. let's do shit to get the yeah. shot. It makes it so much better. 100%. Yeah. You feel like you go on a trip. We've all probably yeah. been on a trip with friends that don't, yes. like aren't about the camera life. And then you're like bringing around and they're like acting weird. And you're like sick. I just ruined, they just fucking ruined the shot. Or we can't do this right. anymore. God, I know. You're yeah, lucky that you were, had those friends who were on board. 100% into it. Like we would sit in the living room with a whiteboard, like writing out ideas. Oh, like, how fun. God, like awesome. my friends were, we were like making shirts together and like screen printing them ourselves. Wow. Like we were 100% like the whole summer, it was only dedicated to that. Nobody was doing anything else. Wait, did, Everyone, any, did anybody else know how to do the YouTube stuff? Or was it just you that were like editing and filming? I was mostly the one editing and filming stuff, but everyone was just like into it. It was just like that. the energy of us going to do stuff was fun. Okay. I'm envious of that. I wish yeah. I had that. That's awesome. Same. It was really fun. Were you working? Did you have a summer job like during no, those summers? No. I was just back home chilling and I was like, I'm just making videos. And That's for the people so that don't know, where are you from? Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia. Okay. On the East Coast. And you did end up going to, you went to college. Did you yes. finish school? Yes. I nice. Did. Okay. So where <laughs> did you end up going to school? Went to Auburn University. War Eagles. War Eagle. There it is. Come on. Hey, okay. Go. You know your mascot. Yeah, let's go. War Eagle. Uh, yeah. So I went to Auburn and as soon as I got there my freshman year, I was like, I got to figure out how to get on the film, how to get on the field to film the football team. And so by... It took me over a year, like the middle of my sophomore year, I started to like be on the field with the team and I was just during the school year filming the sports teams every year. I did the same thing at Oregon, uh -huh. right? So how did you, how was the process like of, did you have any sports content, any high school football stuff or Nothing. was it all okay? Nothing. I didn't, I didn't either. So that's really interesting. So yeah. what was the process like of, did they put out like on Twitter, like an internship opportunity or did you email somebody? How was that? how that process go for you? I had no idea how to do it and how to go about it. And so the first thing I did was actually emailed the president of the university. That's like, incredible. Like That's actually, so great. she's like top. <laughs> actually, the second week of school, I was like, I don't know where to go. I am starting at the top. Literally, it was my mindset. I had I just didn't know what else to do. That's incredible. So I actually got a meeting with him, 
and spoke to him for like 30 minutes just to like get to know him and like cool. chat. And then kind of at the end of it, I was like, by the way, I really want to film for the football team. If you know anyone who could like help me do that. And he actually gave me an email of someone. And when I emailed that person, I basically got to say like, I was sent to you by the president of the university, which was like a big, nice little plug. Yes. And so that year I actually got to film one home game was the only thing they would give me. And it was like the worst home game to film. Like it was like a new sophomore at this point or a freshman. freshman, oh, freshman okay, okay, okay. One noon game that nobody wanted to be at. That's right. The, as shit. That's the one they oh gave my to God, me. Okay. So I did that for the football team. And then I emailed basically everyone that worked in the athletics department. And I was like, I want to film the basketball team, the soccer team, the anything that had to do with athletics. I want to film it. And so I, is that because you grew up playing sports and you like really wanted to film the sports or was it more so like, this is just an opportunity to film something really sick that it was just like, I think making these videos would be really fun. I also really liked to like GoPro videos back in the day when they would come out with like their new cameras. And so I wanted to kind of make stuff like that. Uh, so I reached out to a bunch of people, ended up my freshman year making a video that I called welcome to Auburn university that was like. Same thing as like my summer videos. I just took like the whole semester and compiled it into one video. And then my sophomore year ended up finding out who was running like the football Instagram and DM'd that person and was like, hey, I've like made some videos like related to Auburn and sports and stuff. I wanted to know if I could like shoot with the football team. And basically they they were also looking to bring on students with them to like build out more of like a student to uh, athletic department relationship. And so I was like kind of that first person to like bridge the gap. Oh, nice. And they had me on there my sophomore year, like for the whole season. And so you're covering every sport, just the football team at that point, it was internal with the team. Oh, nice. Okay. And then at the end of that season, basically like the rest of the athletics department was like, we really like what you guys are doing. Then there was someone who was like, do you want to come for the whole basketball season and shoot with us? And then by the end of my sophomore year, they're basically like, okay, next year you're going to have a full-time position doing all the sports. Were you getting paid your sophomore year when they brought you on? No, not sophomore, junior year though. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, that's so interesting you say that because I think people forget how new media is. Like, dude, that wasn't that long ago. And it was the same at Oregon. I remember like my boss was the first ever content creator, like role ever at Oregon, which yeah. is fucking crazy. It's like, dude, that wasn't even that long ago. That's like not even... Not even eight years ago, like the first person ever. So that, like that job is very new and it's crazy that you were part like of the forefront of Auburn's like creative department. Yeah, kind of me, like my boss, especially he was for my senior junior and senior year. He was kind of like really trying to build all of that out and get more into like the social media stuff. And he, me and him, like we were on the forefront of all that for the sports teams, which was really fun. When you had that initial meeting with the president and then yeah. eventually got the second meeting, were you showing them the YouTube videos that you were making with your friends being like, I know how to make videos and film and edit? I was showing like the Auburn video being like, I can shoot like, cause I filmed one football game and then like basketball and volleyball and a whole bunch of sports. So I at least had like something. And I think really it was just that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. That was it was getting you in that door for yeah. them. That's, yeah. that's really cool. At least to shoot one game. They, they basically told me like, we're going to give you a press pass for, it was the Auburn Ole Miss game in 2017. And they were like, we're going to give you a press pass. You have to make us one video. That's a recap of this game. Mm -hmm. If we like this video, you can stay with us the rest of the year. If we don't like the video, see ya. That's actually crazy. Yeah. That's insane. And then were, were you freelancing at all during that time in college or was it mostly like internship i'm doing this this is all i'm really having time for in school what did that look like that it was just like i'm filming sports as much as i can at auburn and then i also have to go to class oh my gosh did yeah. you you know were you super involved in school or what was your major and did it help at all no i was okay. business management and i was just like i feel like the business skill will come in handy at some point in my life knowing how to do business uh so i'll just do that and spend all my time like at the athletics department wow just making videos yeah how much stuff were you making for them like on a weekly basis would you say like my junior year was probably the busiest year and i was doing like you know five videos a week probably something like that wow. that's, a good, like, that's a good yeah. amount with like balancing schoolwork and stuff like 
that's that's a hefty workload i feel like i had to keep track of my hours my junior year and i was working like plus 40 hours every week at the athletics like <laughs> department alone on like, top of on, on top of being on, a full-time student yeah yeah, yeah. Did you love every second of that or loved what? it? Really? Wow. Yeah. And so now do you have any, you graduate college, right? Mm-hmm. Are you immediately going like, I need to get out to LA. Was that always in the back? Cause you're from, you're from the South. Yep. So was it always like LA or New York or where were you? What was going through your mind when you graduate, when you actually finish? Yeah. So summer of 2019, one year before I graduated from Auburn, I came to LA because I kind of just had this idea that this was the place to like make a career in filmmaking if that's what I wanted to do. So me and my friends moved here that summer for two months and just like I made a video every other day on YouTube and that was like what we were doing the whole summer. Oh, fine. And so we were just like with our friends out here and we were just trying to see if LA was the place to be. And at the end of that summer, I was like, yes, as soon as I graduate, I'm going to be out here. I'm going to try and make a career out of this. How many of you were there in this like creator house in the summer? There was, it was me, my girlfriend, plus three and you met her at school met her at auburn oh wow and is she from out there too or no she's from atlanta georgia gotcha. wow and you both came out here both came out here that is awesome yeah. she's is, a, she's a stylist she has her own brand she's awesome shout out to mallory yeah what's the what's the brand name uh series creative very cool I love it. yeah go That's check awesome. that out no, they're both you're both creatives we are me and my girlfriend are both creatives too let's go let's fucking let's go. go i'm single but <laughs> i'm hoping that Rip. my future girlfriend <laughs> slash wife is a creative um okay wait real quick yeah because Auburn sports uh-huh. is a big deal. Yeah, big SEC deal. football, SEC basketball. That's another mm-hmm. level of like fans and Crazy. intensity. And yeah. I don't even think you can compare anything to SEC football or SEC sports in general. Yeah, Oregon's really sick. I went to Wisconsin, so Big Ten. Sick. And when I went there, um, we always were like pretty good at football. And then my freshman year, we made it to the final four in basketball and then my sophomore year we made it to the national championship what about that rose bowl year yeah we lost to oregon it's all good dude (laughs) he just takes any opportunity (laughs) right right (laughs) was there a specific moment that you got to film or shoot at auburn sports Uh that was like super memorable like got to rush the field like Uh oh i can't believe i'm like experiencing this yeah the first time that we beat um alabama in the iron bowl at home yeah that was crazy was for me oh was that the like um did you get to film like the there was there was like back-to-back weeks that auburn had like an insane walk-off win oh you might be talking about when they did like kick six yeah 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 which that was a really big year but that was like 2013 oh my sophomore year but that it's kind of similar thing. My sophomore year, we beat Georgia when they were number one, and then two weeks later, beat Alabama when they were number one. Both at wow, home. that is electric. And they're so, rushing. Were they rushing the field? They rushed the field for the. I think both maybe. That they is, might have rushed. Is the that for not both. the craziest feeling it, being down there and they're just like swarming over the walls? You're like, holy shit, what is happening? I remember like pregame kickoff of the Georgia game. Like the energy in the stadium was unlike anything I ever yeah. experienced before. And I remember looking at the guy who I was shooting stuff with. His name is Josh, and I was like before kickoff like literally jumping around like oh my god dude this is insane you feel that off that yerba mate you you feel that energy i think it's like there's nothing like working a sports game and now you know what i'm talking about like when you're down there the fans are like roaring you can't hear shit it's like a fighter jet going by you're like Yes, the, the, and, and then you get the U or not the UFO, the fucking the, <laughs> the UFO, aliens, the aliens, the yeah. plane goes by. I was like America, like yes, yes, <laughs> like, yes. It it's so sick. Nothing like a football game that crowded the energy. Yeah, That's so awesome. that, and then the first time that I ever had a video play on the jumbotron for oh. for the football team, that was like my boss like taught me a lot about how to make those videos because it's a whole separate thing, and so you kind of like have to build the crowd along with the video to get them to like a rele- like a climax point for everyone to just go nuts. Mm. That's like the whole thing with the hype videos that play on the Jumbotron. And so like I spent, I don't know, three days making that video and then like I was standing there on the field watching it be played in front of like the whole stadium. And then like when I created the moment for the crowd to go crazy and then when it happened, the crowd went crazy and it was just like, I just had chills all over my body. I was like, I made that video. It was just, it was crazy. That's awesome. So those two moments were probably like the biggest. Wait, did you shoot sports when you're at? No. So this is what I was going to say is like, 
a lot of the kids that listen to it are younger, right? So either in college or probably going to be going to college. Mm-hmm. And one regret I had in college, granted, I like knew I was kind of into photography and video, but like was kind of just making like videos for fun, either on like vacation or whatever. I do wish that I had taken advantage of being in school where there's so many different opportunities, whether to shoot sports or music Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. whatever it may be to like practice your craft and get in on that. Do you feel like you got exponentially better from like freshman year to like senior year because you were shooting so much and editing so much? 100%. I think my mindset freshman year was like, I want to shoot stuff that looks cool. And my senior year was like, I want to be, I want to be able to tell a great story. Mm. And that was like the biggest that shift mindset shift mm-hmm. from the beginning was just like, everything was like, is this really cool looking? Like just post stuff on Instagram. Like I made this video and I think it looks cool. And that was it. But then towards the end, it was all like, I set this up really well. Like I, I wanted to know how to really tell a story. And my boss was the one who like really instilled that in me. Like every time I was just making a video that looked cool, he was like, you're making this cause you think it looks cool. This, there's no story here. And I would be like, but it's cool. It looks cool. I get DM'd about a handful of videos every day and 99% of them, the conversation goes, there's no story here. And like, what, what did it mean? You know? And they're like, yeah. it just looks cool. Yeah. So it's very interesting that you brought that up. Cause I want you to talk a little bit about what you think goes into a story. Like use a sports video, for example, cause you've done them. Mm-hmm. A lot of them, you know, like use a sports video and tell me what goes in to a sports storytelling piece and how can people get better at you know practicing that storytelling muscle i feel like it's a really understanding the context of what you're shooting like who you're shooting for and what the story around the team is and what's going on behind the scenes that like the fans of that team can't see from like them playing on the field and so like being able to flesh out like certain personality traits in the players or like what's going on between the coaches and the team like when the team is really down what is that like and like how can you play on that for the fans to like humanize the rest of the team and so I feel like you just have to really understand like what's going on with the team and then use that to your advantage when you're going in and cutting the story. I feel that. What do you think about as far as like sound and pieces like Uh, that that kind of help enhance it or like, you know, shot selection? Can you talk to me a little bit about that? I feel like shot selection and sound always was like a pre-planned like, okay, I know what the story is going to be. And so like that's the everything is has to be motivated for that. Like I remember one game I was I was shooting the Auburn game and like the whole point of the video we were trying to make was to show that a lot of the players on the team have like a um, tough background. They come from like a hard place, some of them. And so like a lot of the shots that I was getting were like geared specifically towards that. So in the video, it wasn't like they were just saying, hey, I'm from a, a tough place, but like the shots showed that without having to say it. Show, don't tell. Yes. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that a lot. That's great. Okay, so now you moved out to LA. Yep. Wait, sorry. The summer that you moved out to LA, yes, you had graduated college or you were... Right before my senior year. Okay, gotcha. So then walk me through, you graduate college. Do you move out here uh, like right away mm-hmm. or are you staying at home for a little bit, saving up some money, then moving out here? Like, What was your plan? Well, I graduated during quarantine. Oh, oh yeah, shit. Yeah. Did so, you, you didn't even walk? No, I didn't walk or anything. Damn. So it was like... Spring break, I went home for what was supposed to be one week and then didn't go back to school. That's insane. Yeah. So it shut, the world shut down like when I was on spring break, like the middle of it. And so I knew I still wanted to be in LA and then May rolled around and I actually graduated from school and I was like, I can't sit at home anymore. Like I have to be there. I have to go to LA. So I moved here June 1st of 2020, like mid pandemic and didn't have a job, didn't have any connections or anything, but I had a place to stay and I was like, I'm just going to figure out how to work. Who do, who were you staying with? By myself. Oh, you, okay. Gotcha. And what was like the first job that you got? Ironically enough, the first job that I shot was with Casey Neistat. No, no way. Shit. Yeah. Oh, I would have freaked out. <laughs> it was a big full circle moment oh for sure. Yeah, yeah. What was it exactly? It was, uh, 
YouTube video for Dixie D'Amelio where Casey was teaching Dixie how to how surf. To surf. I, I saw that one. I've seen this video. Okay. So oh you can actually see me in the video a little bit because I was there like with my, I had my 1DX in like a water housing uh-huh. and I was like in the water with them. So like in some of the GoPro clips, you can like see me with the housing. Like no way. And stuff. Yeah. How, how did that come yeah, about? how did that come about? So I moved out here and I was like, I got to figure out how to get work. I'm just going to send emails. It was the only, cause I couldn't go meet people mm-hmm. and couldn't go anywhere. So I was like, Anytime that I came across someone on social media who had LA and anything that had to do with film in their bio, you got an email from me. I think I reached out to you for the same reason back like way back in 2020 because I wanted to connect with you because I saw yes. one of your TikTok videos and I was like, okay, he lives in LA. He's a filmmaker. I'm going to try and reach out. I love it. So didn't end up happening. No, it but- didn't because your mom got COVID. She did get, yeah, she I did gave get her, COVID. I gave her COVID. Yeah, Brayden actually gave my really? mom COVID. It's great. Yeah, and then it just we just yeah, lost, lost yes, connection yes. because of that. Yeah. But yeah, so I was just reaching out to as many people as I could and uh, ended up getting a response from a guy who owned a production company and he was actually starting to kind of expand. So he was looking for someone like me, same situation as when I was shooting at Auburn. Like they were looking for more people he was looking for more people to help him like work and edit on stuff and so i went and met with him and he was like yeah i have a bunch of projects going on like you can come work and i was like great this is perfect and i didn't really know what we were going to be doing but then he sent me a text one day and he was like i'm gonna have you come shoot dixie's youtube video casey's gonna be teaching her how to surf i was like (gasps) oh my god (laughs) i love that i would have freaked out i was just like the whole time trying to like not look too much at casey you're like i'm like yeah i'm jack I watch every one of your videos. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. It did, was fun though. did you did you get to introduce yourself to him at the shoot? Yeah, I mean I got to say hi nice. and like he gave me his wetsuit top that I got to like go in the water with. How so he fun. was like he was really fun and like the video was great. I didn't like get to tell him that I was a massive yeah. fan or anything, but it's funny. Yeah. So Good. you know, you do you do the thing with Casey. You're mm-hmm. out here, you're mm-hmm. like looking for work, you're grinding, sending out emails. I, I could I totally resonate with you on the email thing because I've I've told Coach I've sent thousands of yeah. emails. When yeah. I first got back from school trying to find people that would like I took so many interviews of silly ass companies and I'm like, I don't want to do this, but I'll freelance for you. And they're like, bye. I'm like, that's great. Never mind. So when talk- did you start freelancing in LA? Um, right when I got back, I was actually, when I'd come back, I was always working for people. When I'd come back from school, I'd like mm-hmm. try and finagle. Like if I was on break, I'd try and do anything and everything that I could to make money. I was yeah. a little hustler trying okay. to just make, as soon as I had the camera and I figured out once I did a sorority video, I was like, I can make bread doing this. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like now yeah. I'm like, we were literally we were joking the other day, and I was like, after I made like five hundred bucks in a video, I was like, it's over, dude. I'm, I'm rich, <laughs> rich. I can buy, dude, I can buy my own gear now and stuff. Goes on yeah. Zillow.com, <laughs> starts looking at fucking like multi million dollar yeah, houses. Exactly. So, it's on me. Um, you know, talk to me a little bit about you get that job, and we're like, okay, how how are you gonna go about getting more jobs and getting mm-hmm. a stable income? Because it is expensive as fuck to live here. Very. You know. Yeah. So the first like six to eight months, I was working. 100% with uh, that production company. We were doing all the D'Amelio's YouTube videos, all of like just like random side projects that we were doing. And so I was really busy doing that. Also at the same time, uh, I had met like a bunch of people in like the, uh, like Matt King, David Dobrik, like that whole crew of people. I met them through mutual friends. And so at the end of 2020, or I guess it was the beginning of 2020, I started working on uh, Views, Jason and David's podcast. And oh, I was, nice. I was editing it. That was like the first podcast I edited. And then also at the beginning of 2021, the guy who I was working with was like really expanding. He started like to get a lot bigger. So he was like, I'm going to bring people in like full time. But like if you're working with me full time, you can't do any of your own work basically. At the time, I was kind of like getting a lot of my own work on the side just from being out here for like six to eight months or whatever, meeting those people. And so I was kind of like, uh, I think I might just do my own thing. And then I just transitioned at that point to like only doing my own work. You bet on yourself. I did. Okay. What, what were some of those projects like this? You're doing, you're doing views. What, yeah. what, what else are you, and, and are you doing outreach or is it now? Is it coming from like people that you know from your network yeah. and meeting people and they're like, Oh, I do videos or like, how did mm-hmm. that work? Cause I think that so many people want to come out here and want to make videos or want to do design or photos, whatever. 
and they don't have a network at all. So right. how did you go about like building out that network and then getting work from it? First six to eight months when I was doing all those videos with him, I was like meeting a lot of people and just like getting my name out there and get kind of getting my foot in the door. And then once I had my foot in the door, everything was like word of mouth. And I started to meet people who worked at agencies. Like everyone out here works somehow, even if you work in music, like you might represent an artist who needs videos. Like everyone needs a video. Once you come off as like, I'm the video guy, I can make videos for you. It started to kind of snowball with the amount of work that I was doing. So like once I got views, because I started doing that, then I was doing Unfiltered, which is another of their friends' podcast. Then I was doing Hoot and Half, which is Matt and Mike's podcast. Then I was doing uh, The Good Boys. So at one time I was doing like four podcasts at one time, all for them, because it was just word of mouth, like he can edit our podcasts. So it was just kind of like snowballed from there. Did you see podcasts as an opportunity to have consistent bread yes and kind of have stability out here in LA yes and like when you first moved out here did you even like consider editing podcasts as like a a viable option of no I never thought I would like edit as many podcasts as I do but it was just like it just kind of happened that way and the first opportunity was to do views because they were they were starting to do video so they were looking for an editor and so that was like the first thing that I got and I was like okay this will be every week like I know that I'm going to get paid a little bit from this. And then like, it just kind of expanded from there. We talk about that, how like you have a skill of editing and you might think that there's only one way to kind of monetize that skill, but there's so many different ways, like different businesses Mm -hmm. have different types of videos that they need edited or like podcast is a way to, you know, have consistency in making money of like Mm -hmm. using your skill as an editor. So yeah, if you're, if you're thinking about like moving out here, like needing to make bread in a certain way, like yeah get creative in the way that you can use your skills because editing specifically or shooting, there's more than one way Mm -hmm. to to utilize that skill. Yeah, they're high value skills and people need creative people. All the time. And it's only, I think it's only getting bigger. I call it the creator boom. That's what what I'm calling it. Let's go, dude. I'm calling it right now. We'll roll with it. Yep, yep, bing. Patented. The creator boom. It's (laughs) happening and I think like everyone needs, dude, every fucking NFL athlete that's good and cares about their brand, all those athletes are going to want normal people that they can hang around that aren't fucking weird right they can make them cool stuff and like dude same with influencers like if they're smart and they want to make better stuff they'll partner with great creative people exactly that are good at what they do exactly it's only going to get bigger i think to where everyone's having like their own little personal person exactly and i also have to say with the whole networking thing i'm so so at networking i'm not great at it my girlfriend though is a master network really? just because not really as much networking she's just a social butterfly so she meets a hundred new people every day and like she a lot of the reason that i got to even meet all of those people and start working on views and all that was basically ended up being through her so like a lot of the connections that i have i have to go ahead and shout out that it a lot of it did end up coming from my girlfriend not really even from me that's sweet what's her name Mallory. Mallory. Shout out Mallory. Shout out Mallory. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So working on a podcast with David Dobrik and yeah. a lot of his friends, you're working with some of the top influencers in LA. Mm-hmm. Have they given you any pieces of advice or have you picked up any any like nuggets just from being around that and seeing how they operate um, that you've kind of like taken and put into your own content or just like things that you've learned? Yeah. I think... One thing that was a big shift when I started working with people like them is they're really good at knowing how to optimize whatever the story is for views or social media. Not in like a shallow way necessarily, but like you can just do little things to whatever your story is because like those little things will help it do well specifically on TikTok. Like when I was at Mm. Auburn, the only thing I cared about was story and like it was very like purist filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And then like, if I had that same mindset doing like my TikTok videos, I might not do some of the little things that I do to try and like hook people at the beginning of a video to Mm -hmm. like gain audience retention and things like that, that they would do that I sort of picked up on or like taking a story and figuring out how can you tell this seven minute story in two minutes and have it mean the exact same thing because you're getting through it faster and people would rather hear three two-minute stories than one seven-minute story i think that's so important we were literally we were always talking about like we may i make a tiktok almost every day and kosas uh-huh. makes a lot of tiktoks too and like with the pod i was literally teaching Keon the other day about how 
we took like there was say there was a clip or whatever right and i was like this part right here is so important it needs to go at the beginning and we're gonna put it at the beginning right. and then we'll like lead into this video because when people are like what is he talking about like i want to hear more about this and i think that's so interesting that you say that because telling a story on tiktok is way different than telling a youtube story like you yep. just said or telling a real like stuff that you stuff that eats on tiktok doesn't eat on reels right it's super weird it's like this video's got 50k like why isn't it doing well on reels it's like a whole different audience and yeah it's so crazy i don't fully understand reels to be honest i took a deep dive on reels i want to say like a couple weeks ago maybe even uh -huh. a month ago i was because I, I was like i hardly ever just like scroll on wheel mm. on reels i'm scrolling on tiktok all day long but yeah. like reels and reels is way more cinematic mm -hmm. like tiktok is tiktok yeah. and reels the is like the dudes. tiktoks that are only cinematic in that way and mm -hmm. maybe that's just because of like the type of people i follow and like the kind of content that it's like feeding out to me but yeah from what i noticed it's a lot more like the travel mm -hmm. influencer like pretty video type of thing but i think that's just because that's that is more IG. so yeah, what yeah. Oh, that is. makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Interesting. It, it is crazy. I mean, we're trying, like I was posting, we posted some of these clips on, um, on shorts. Yeah. And they are, it, it doesn't do as well, which is fucking crazy. So it's like, you're, you're always trying to experiment as a creative and we've learn. done two on, on shorts though. We, that's, we that's true. We haven't, really that's much. our sample we size. Yeah, that's <laughs> our, we don't have a huge sample size, but on TikTok, a, the, B testing. <laughs> but on TikTok, the videos eat. So we just yeah. gotta, just gotta keep ripping them and yeah. keep experimenting and yeah. trying new things. What made you want to start daily vlogging on, on TikTok? So basically in 2021, I was like, working really hard doing all freelance related stuff and kind of was like the the two biggest things were I didn't feel like I had full creative control over the videos that I was making for other people and I also didn't think that like the benefit of the video was mostly going towards the person I was making it for and not for me which is fine because like that's how it works I'm making a video for another person and they're the ones who are going to like get the value from it or like the benefit from it but I wanted to find some way that I could build something slowly that was going to like benefit me in the long run something that I could like build and expand off of rather than like do one project with one company move to the next one move to the next one move to the next one so I wanted to try and find some way to do that and then I was actually in Mexico with Mallory and I was like talking to her about that and how I was like kind of frustrated with it. And I wanted to like figure out a way to do something else. And she was like, you really should figure out a way how to like make TikTok videos like constantly. And I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make TikTok videos. That sounds so lame. I don't want to do that. And she was like, well, I don't know what to tell you figure it out because it's what you need to do. And I was like, okay, I don't know what, can, what can I think of? And then I was like, Maybe I could just do a daily vlog on TikTok, much like the stuff that I liked when I in 2015 when I was watching YouTube, and I'll just reformat it to be the most ingestible 60 seconds that I can make it, and then that'll be something that I can do every day, and on top of that, I can still do all, all of the work that I'm doing on the side. Because with YouTube, like I wasn't able to make YouTube videos consistently because they take so much work. Yeah, they take so long to so make much YouTube work. videos. So are you filming these TikToks on your phone mostly? Most of the time, yeah. Okay, and so you, you film all throughout the day and then you get home at night and then that's the one that goes up the next day? Or no, is that going up the same day? I, I just film the entire day and then at some point the next day, that's like the gr only grace I give myself is like, I'll just edit the day before's video and post it sometime the next day. So sometimes mm. I just have like a couple hours in the morning, sometimes mm. it's in the afternoon, like mm. I haven't edited mine today. So I'm going to go home after this and edit it and it will be from yesterday, what yesterday was. Okay. So today's vlog will actually be out tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we make the cut. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. That's awesome, dude. And so were you doing anything looking at these views at all? Or you're just making them because you're passionate about them? And now, because now they're starting to get traction, yeah, right? They're, they're like, yeah. these videos, you have, you it's have, kind of pop, yeah, you had, the, you, you had the okay. egg video that went pretty viral. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so that, which was f fucking we, hilarious. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah, tell them about the eggs before we get into Dude, this question. you were the reason we, this fucking apartment buys happy eggs now. Really? Dead ass. Let's go. So I was like, yo, this dude's eggs look so orange. Like, <laughs> fuck a yellow yolk. Yeah, we yeah. need the orange yolk. So I'm I'm on the happy I'm on the happy X train. Then I start shitting on Braden and and Chase. I'm like, dude, you guys' yolks are looking pretty yellow. <laughs> so then they got on the happy eggs train. And then I was at Trader Joe's. They don't sell happy eggs there. But I was like, okay, you know oh. what? Pasture raised, organic, probably will be orange yolk. 
they're yellow. No. Nope. Yeah, they're so, yellow. So love Trader Joe's. Shout out Trader Joe's. There's just certain things you can't get at Trader Joe's. So right. Ralph's does have them though. Yes, they do have them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're, so, they're, they're, they're like pretty damn orange at Ralph's. The ones I have right now yeah. from Ralph's. Um, so shout out Happy Eggs because yeah. those Big are the best. shout out. Yeah. yeah. Get your yolk game up. Exactly. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, wait. What, <laughs> yeah, what? Brandon was like, Brandon's like, dude, Jack's got this fucking blue carton of eggs. <laughs> And they're so sick, dude. Like every every egg is a different color, and like the yolks are so orange. I was like, yeah, we need that. Who would have thought sure. eggs yeah, who, would be like? Who would have thought that Erewhon would be like our favorite little store to like yeah. go into? I'm like, give me that juice, give me the steak breakfast burrito, and give me those fucking Let's eggs. Let's go. And the first time I bought them was at Erewhon, and they were like twelve bucks. And then I went to Ralph's, I'm like, oh, they're like only six dollars here. Like, let's go. I found Happy Eggs half off. Yeah, yeah. So funny. Wait, what did I just ask? I really wanted to know. Oh, about um about your TikTok, like gaining traction and whatnot. Uh-huh. So like were were you an are you analyzing at all like how those are doing and then being like, mm, okay, that one really ate? Like what is, do you have a TikTok strategy at all? Or are you just making them purely because you love making these every mm-hmm. single day? At least with the daily vlog, I want that to be a place where like if you're already someone who likes the videos in a certain way or if you like already follow me that's more for like a warm audience i'd say so like i'm not opening up the videos every day being like hey my name's jack and i'm a filmmaker in la Mm -hmm. that'd be like for a really cold audience who doesn't know me i just like get right into the videos and i talk about my day almost as if like you already know who i am you're a friend yes Mm -hmm. i think that's smart i like it yeah and so that's like if that way if people do follow me and they like it they're not getting this like cold open as if i don't know you every Mm -hmm. day because then it kind of depletes that parasocial relationship i feel like Mm -hmm. so then on top of that i make some videos that i do put an effort into like okay how can i optimize this specifically for views what's the hook here how can i tell the story in a way that i know will perform on tiktok make it for a cold audience and then hope that that grabs those people in they watch some of the vlogs and decide that they then like the videos and what about the videos that are like premiere pro tutorials and stuff like that how do those fit into the strategy i think those are like cold audience but just like they are directed towards a niche Mm -hmm. but like to video and you do videography and it's like oh okay and a lot of the a lot of the content that you're talking about in your daily vlogs is like oh i picked up a podcast Mm -hmm. i edited a podcast Mm -hmm. today so then people are naturally gonna be like oh what are the best export settings for a youtube video for podcast And I also want the vlog to be like anyone can watch it. I think one thing that was really smart that like Casey Neistat did was if he did a camera review, even someone who didn't care about cameras would like the video because of the way that he shot it yeah. and the way he edited it. And it was like, about it. he wasn't going to like sit there and talk to you for three minutes about the sensor size. Mm-hmm. He was just going to like rip open the box and you're going to be like, that's funny that he ripped open the box. Mm-hmm. So it was like for anybody. And so I want the vlogs to kind of be that way for anybody, for a warm audience as well. And then I can kind of dig on the side into like specific things. Do you think you'll branch out from TikTok and go back to YouTube at a point or like Big picture, Mm -hmm. what would you do in a perfect world with your content? If you had like, you could hire an editor, whatever, what what would you do? The goal is kind of to get back to YouTube in a way. Long-term goal, I would like to keep doing what I'm doing now, build up, create an audience, maybe get back into YouTube and then start like a mini production company almost or like a creative house, creative agency little situation. And then like all the videos that I would make like the underlying story would be I have a production company and like we make videos for clients, whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever. But like my videos kind of like how Casey was building a tech company. Mm -hmm. And then he was on top of that, just like scootering around New York city, taking all his meetings and whatnot. yeah. Yeah. So just like having the color of the videos being like whatever, going to Irwan and getting the eggs, like whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But then on like the back end of it, it's like we're creating like a production company. One of my favorite shows of all time is Avatar The Last Airbender. Okay. I'm rewatching it right now. Nice. And one of the reasons I really like it is like the underlying story is like Aang has to master all the elements and defeat the Fire Lord. But like that's like a serious, that's like the serious underlying story. But then like some of the episodes don't really necessarily have to do with any of that. It's just like the funny stuff that the the Characters, kids are getting yeah. into. So that's like w- the reason that I like those types of things because there is a little bit of a purpose. So it would be like building a production company and like I could talk about those things when in, I need to, but then like the color on top of it is the rest of the stuff. So now at this current moment, mm-hmm. 
is the way you're making your living by editing podcasts and then doing TikTok as well? Or are you doing the podcast stuff, TikTok, and then also, you know, other one-off freelance clients? Or do you have other like pure video, like where you're filming and editing mm-hmm. retainer clients? Or is it just like one-off things? Like, mm-hmm. can you talk to me a little bit about that? And actually in the midst of a switch kind of mm. in that realm, like last year, 100% of my income was just through like podcast clients, freelance clients, like people that I have, I'm doing work for like on a weekly basis and like random projects that would pop up. Now I'm actually starting to get deals and opportunities directly from TikTok. Sick. And those, eggs. yeah, those opportunities are actually like more profitable for me. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to, I'm actually just still trying to figure it out. Like in two weeks, I'm going back to Stagecoach and they reached out to me directly because they liked my TikToks. Unbelievable. Have any, and they just like the vlogs. Like they didn't, this was before I went to Coachella and like made all that content about it. They just liked the vlogs and the person that liked them happened to rep Golden Voice and Instagram. Oh my God. So then like it's going to come directly from that. So I'm kind of starting to get more traction from TikTok and then hopefully like that can lead to cool opportunities directly from TikTok. Isn't isn't that crazy though, dude? Because Oh my God, a dancing app. I was telling, mm. we, I've told Coast this like multiple times, but like we were making TikToks in our frat basement, hiding from everyone else. So they didn't see us make these fucking TikToks because really? they thought it was cringy. Yeah. And they were going to flame us. And I was like, no, <laughs> we'll make them the basement at 2 a.m. Anyways, flash forward almost a year. People are making full-time income. Some people are making millions of dollars on yeah. a dancing app. Billions, of Billions. Of yeah. <laughs> trillions of dollars. It's like a, the, the creator economy is huge. It's like only getting bigger. And yeah. now because of these fun videos that you made for fun, you potentially could make a full like income for a year, uh, someone's salary job yeah. making videos that you just love to make. That's so cool. And especially on TikTok, like you, your videos go out to like everyone. It doesn't have to be like Instagram where it's mostly just your followers. So you never know who's going to see your videos. And like, I would never think that someone who saw the videos happen to like rep golden voice and Instagram and then would want to reach out to me for that opportunity. But if I wasn't making TikTok videos, then they would never even know that I could do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Two things. One, you never know who's watching your stuff. Totally. Yeah. Dude, I got an opportunity to shoot what I'm doing now for Loud Luxury because one of the guys in Loud Luxury found my or was watching my TikToks and reached out to me. So like one, you never know who's watching your stuff. But two, dude, you've been grinding. You're doing daily vlogs. Like it's insane. If you are creating content, if you're listening to this and you're mad that you're not getting an opportunity off of making like a few videos or like I've been doing TikTok for a week or two weeks and Mm -hmm. not getting any views or whatever. Let's like you got to put in the time. It's like, yeah. you got to stay consistent. You got to put in the time. And like, eventually if your content's good and you'll get better, the more you do it, mm-hmm. the opportunities will arise. The first three months that I was making videos, each video got like 200 to 500 views, like nothing really. Mm-hmm. And then because I think I was consistent with it and each video gets like 1% better. I think like I started uploading my old ones to YouTube shorts just to kind of like test it and see how it was. And I was watching like vlog 45 when I was uploading it and I was like this is terrible like this is trash my voiceover sounds bad like the pacing's bad like I don't have enough shots like this is really bad but I didn't realize that as I was making them daily I didn't think they were really getting better because I'm just making them every day but now I'm I guess tomorrow will actually be 200 days in a row wow yeah so then but they've gotten slowly and slowly a little bit better are we gonna be are we in 200 no, I think oh we're one ninety nine. I think I'm filming two hundred tomorrow. Gotcha. Oh, okay, I okay, think okay. that's how it works. It's gonna okay. get really excited. That's so <laughs> sick, dude! Congrats. Yeah, that's Thanks. awesome. Are Thanks. you are you filming? Are you recording the voiceover now with like a mic, or were you using your phone originally, or like what did that look like? I always did with the mic on my C three hundred. Oh wow! Yeah, how awesome! Great. Yeah, just a little 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 undercut. That's I great. literally just ordered a cord this morning off of Amazon because I saw this guy was like. This is how you get a professional mic recording straight to your iPhone. And it's like, you just need this cord. And I was like, okay, sick. I was going to tell you about that. Oh, you did. You sent me that video. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. That's nice. How did you get a camera in Coachella? I was very surprised by it. I, cause I think that they have rules about not bringing cameras mm-hmm. in, but with, I was with a detachable lens. 
Is that the rule? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I didn't know what the rule was and I didn't really care what the rule was. I was still going to try no matter what. So I was like, I rented the R5 and I was like, I'm going to bring this in and it's going to be up to the security person who checks my bag, whether it gets in or not. And every day, nobody said anything. That's amazing. Did you have VIP? Uh, Yeah. Or GA? Yeah. God. Yeah. I had GA like a fucking peasant and (laughs) never again. Let me tell you. Okay. Too much walking in GA. Can't go into certain places. The yeah. food's better in VIP. Yeah, the food is good there. That's so funny. Uh, I was telling Brayden, I want to start duetting stuff on TikTok because that's one feature that's like a huge deal on, mm-hmm. on TikTok that I haven't taken advantage of. And I was like, dude, I want to I wanna duet one of your Coachella vlogs because like those popped off and it's because like either you, you're watching the live stream and you have like the cool shots or everybody's just shooting on an iPhone oh, and shit. like yeah. you're mm-hmm. you're getting shots that like really no one's seeing on TikTok. Yeah, and that was kind of the reason I didn't care what yeah. the rule was cuz I was like if this were to work out there's a lot of value in it. Were you using a 7200? Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. It's a uh, heavy yeah. setup to be using and carry around it was all a lot. So it R5 7200 just ripping it. And a 16 to f- uh 35. Oh, wow. you had two lenses. Yeah. You have a backpack? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, how cool. On day one, everyone was like, why are you carrying this around? All that? Why are you carrying this around? And then I like posted the first vlog and they're like, I know why you're carrying this around. You're like, you'll see. You'll see. That's- Just watch. I started, showing them, I started showing them the clips I got of Harry Styles and they're like, oh my God, yeah. that's oh, that, amazing. That's so funny. But you were, um, you were pretty close though. Like yeah. you guys were, if you have VIP, you're... you're I thought only artists was able to... Were you just like super close because you guys mopped to the front? Or I is had, there... I guessed. So oh. I, it was like we we could get like a little bit closer than... The VIP. pit in the front? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's sick. Which was really nice because yeah. otherwise even the 70 to 200 doesn't get that yeah. close. Mm-hmm. Was that your first time at Coachella? Uh, third. Nice. Yeah. Are you recovered? I think today is my yeah, full, same. like, I went to the sauna this morning. <laughs> I like You're feeling back alive. I feel good again. That's like, so funny. Yeah. Kosas was feeling it last night when we did that pod. He, oh, we really? had to get him hyped up with the with the pump up song. A couple the, monsters. Kosas won't drink my monsters. They would have done the trick, though. It would have just they would have just flipped him right back around. He would have been ready. A few times day. I have drank a monster, I'm like, dude, I think I'm going to die. My heart is going to pound out of my head chest. against the yeah. wall. God, Do you that. have any caffeine? I do, I'm a coffee guy. Oh, I got okay. a Keurig over there. He, okay, he, okay. he rips the coffee every morning. Like, how many cups do you have a day? Probably two. Like, for sure two. Like, one one in the morning, one in the afternoon. If you stopped, would you get headaches? I don't know. I haven't stopped. <laughs> and I don't plan on it. Because <laughs> I remember my roommate in college, he would drink a lot of coffee. And, yeah. like, some days he would be like, all right, I'm going to, like, not drink it for a couple days. Yeah. So I would have, like, bad headaches. I think, I don't know if I would get headaches. I think I just, like, wouldn't feel awake. Mm. okay you'd be yeah. like foggy yeah i want to ask you about giving a piece of advice to like your younger self mm. right so you're 24 now you've been doing this for six seven years like to your 18 year old self what is one piece of advice that you would give them that you've learned along your journey to start out only make things that you enjoy making don't make them because you're trying to have someone else like them which I actually did, a, I think, a pretty good job of. Like when I was making YouTube videos, I never cared about views. I never cared about who was watching them. It was just like me and my friends are having fun making these. That's it. That's all I care about. And I think that was probably a big thing. Uh, the second thing was never be afraid to ask, whether it's the president of the uh, university or like DMing or reaching out to like literally anyone. Just never be afraid to ask. Like no is not a big deal. And every no leads to a better yes. And if you don't ask, the answer is no. Yes. Bang, you'll never get it. Yeah. I love that. Where can the people find you on social media? They can find me on TikTok hey. uh, at Jack Cook or dot Jack Cook. And then Instagram underscore HJ Cook. I need to change that, but that's what it is right now. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to episode number 26 wow. of the 505 podcast. That was it. That was it. That was quick. How long did we go for? I think like 45 minutes. Dang, that felt yeah. like 30 yeah, minutes. That was amazing. I know, right? It's like flies by. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're still here, please lob a screenshot up on your story. Tag Jack, tag B-Figgy, tag Costas G, and we'll see you guys all next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.